All right, so welcome to a short physics workshop. Uh, the topic today is going to be an introduction to vectors and forces. So I'm going to do this in two parts. So this video will be part one, where I really just go over the basics. And then part two, which will be a separate second video, is going to be problem solving, where we get into um, a little bit more of the math and stuff like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, an intro to vectors. So what are vectors? Um, well, in short, vectors are mathematical quantities um, that have two components. So you could apply that term vector to any mathematical quantity that has two components. In physics, specifically, when we describe vectors, those two components are magnitude, and direction. So what we're going to use to describe vectors, um, or as, as, an, as an example to get started with, are forces. Okay, so if you think about what magnitude is, magnitude is the size or amount. So if someone asks you, if you have a force, and someone asks you what is the magnitude of the force, the magnitude would be the, the number of newtons that that force has. So if it's a five newton force, the magnitude would be five newtons. Now, and then you have direction, which is pretty obvious. There's several different ways you could write that. You could say um, something like to the left. You could say east. Or if you're getting even more specific, you could say um, 36 degrees from horizontal. So those are all ways, examples, of defining a direction. So <clears throat> with forces, you could do all of those. Um, but the easiest way is usually to use a free body diagram. And you actually show the direction with an arrow. So you might have, let's say this is a car right here, okay? So you might say, well, there's a force pulling down on the car, and you actually show the direction in a picture, and we call that, let's say this is F1, and maybe that is the weight of the car, okay? And then you also have other forces <clears throat> acting on the wheels, pushing up, and those are normal, that's what they're called, normal forces on the wheels, okay? But we show the direction of those with arrows, and then later on when we plug them into problems, we'll define them with positive and negative. So if an arrow is pointing one direction, an opposite arrow would just be negative. So if we say up is positive, well, weight would be negative, and the normal forces would be positive. So you can use them mathematically too. But in the basics are vectors are something that has two components. In physics, those components are magnitude and direction. Forces are examples of vectors. You could also include um, other things such as displacement, change in position, <clears throat> velocity, acceleration, um, momentum, which you'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, torque is a vector. Um, there's lots of other vectors in physics. So everything in physics breaks down to either a vector or a scalar. A scalar is something that only has one of these. It doesn't have directional as magnitude. So vectors, two things. Scalars, one thing. Force, vector. Got it? Got it. Good. Okay. <clears throat> Those are the basics. Now, to get into solving the most introductory of problems, um, let's say you have several vectors and you want to figure out how they relate to each other. Well, remember earlier I said that vectors are mathematical quantities. And if something's mathematical, what does that mean? Well, it means um, they can add, subtract, multiply, etc. Okay. So you might be asking, well, what's the point of that? Well, just think about it for a second. Let's say I give you a problem, or I give you, I describe a situation to you. Okay. So um, 
And so there's a whole bunch of different forces acting on an object. And they're all acting in like an X, Y, or a, a straight line, okay? So you have an object, and here's our object. We'll call that guy object. And let's say there's, there's a force pushing him this way, and we'll call that F1. There's another force pushing him this way, we'll call F2. There's a force pushing him this way, which we'll call F3. And there's another force, which we'll call F4, okay? So let's say you actually measured those forces, and you found that F1 is, I don't know, 10 newtons. F2 is, let's say, 15 newtons. F3 is 5 newtons, and maybe F4 is also 10 newtons, okay? So the question is, well, what is the net force, okay? In physics, we are very often concerned with the net force acting on something, okay? So the net force, a lot of times we show that with this sigma sign. This is sigma. It's Greek letter sigma, and it means sum, okay, or net. So if you add up all of the forces, what is the final total number that's acting on that object, okay? Now that's important because net forces cause accelerations, which are changes in motion. If you don't remember, that Greek letter delta means change, okay? So if you know the net force on something, you know whether there's going to be an acceleration, which is a change in motion. That's your logical thinking. This is the symbol for net force. So what we need to find is the net force. So you immediately might say, well, okay, so sum means add, so let's add all of these up. And you would say 10 plus 15 plus five is 10. And you would get an answer, let's see, uh, what's that, 25, 35, 40. And you would be incorrect, because if you think about it, these are vectors. So in addition to the magnitude, what you also have to consider is that second component, which is the direction, okay? So if I look at these, you can see that F1 and F2 are both pointing to the right. F3 and F4 are both pointing to the left. So mathematically, you can transition from an arrow to some other way of indicating a direction. Well, if these are opposites from each other, I could take one to be positive and the other to be negative, and then I'm actually accounting for the direction. So in physics, a lot of times what you'll do is when you solve a problem, you will identify or state, your positive direction or your reference frame, your frame of reference, reference probably going to spell something wrong, okay? So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say this way is positive and this way is negative, okay? So everything pointing to the right, I'm going to make positive. Everything pointing to the left, I, you can, I'm going to call negative. And it doesn't really matter which one you choose. So you might be solving physics problems and you may write it like this. A kid next to you may do the opposite and they might say to the left is positive and to the right is negative. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that as long as you indicate what you're doing so that when you show your answer to somebody or you use your answer to do something, you, they, this is very clear, okay? So if I do that, I can now use my diagram to change this a little bit and I can say, well, F1 and F2 are gonna be positive and F3 and F4 are gonna be negative. So now I can simply add these up and I get positive 10, positive 15 is 25 but then negative 5 and negative 10 is minus 15. So I have a net force of, what would that be? 10 newtons. And that's in the positive direction. So I could leave that as positive. And as long as you have this on your paper showing what positive means, that'd be fine. But if you wanted to, you could also say to the right. And then now you have identified that there is a net force of 10 newtons to the right, which would indicate that this object will accelerate to the right, or its motion will change to the right, and it'll start gaining velocity in that direction. All right, does that make sense? Now, the next step is going to be problem solving. So that's the basics. Um, but it gets a little more complicated. I wouldn't say a lot, but just a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna stop the video right now. You can kind of process that. Um, and then I'm gonna come back in just a second with a second video over how to solve more advanced problems um, with vectors, force vectors. Thanks.